All right, what is up, YouTube? Alien Horizon No. 2 here today, playing all of the TMNT games for the NES. And what we're going to be showing in this video is going to be the final boss from every TMNT game for the NES, as well as showing some gameplay of the boss encounters from each game before reaching the final level and boss. Eventually, we'll be posting a lot of play for TMNT 3, the Manhattan Project, and TMNT Tournament Fighters for the NES. We will also be posting a video soon demonstrating how to input the cheats and helpful tips for beating TMNT 3, the Manhattan Project. If you enjoyed this video and gameplay, check out the NES playlist located here on the Alien Horizon 2 YouTube gaming channel, featuring gameplay from each of these games with more TMNT Tournament Fighters content coming soon. If there's anything else you would like to see for these games, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like this. Of course, thanks for checking it out, and stay tuned for much more. Also, if you want, check out and follow us on Instagram by clicking the link in the description or searching Alien Horizon 2 to an IG. For those of you who are not familiar with these games or would like to know more about them, I will talk about each one of these games briefly. If you have not seen it already, check out our All Boss video and review of TMNT 3 The Manhattan Project where we go a little bit more in detail about our experience with this game. So starting off with TMNT 1 for the NES, the Ninja Turtles Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello are on a mission to retrieve the Life Transformer gun from Shredder, a device that can restore their Sensei Splinter back to his human form. The Turtles' first objective is to rescue their reporter friend April Neal who is being held captive by Bebop and Rocksteady somewhere in the city. After rescuing April, the turtles must swim underwater to disarm a series of bombs set to destroy a dam, rescue Splinter from the Mecha Turtle, destroy a giant mouser, find the Technodrome, and eventually defeat Shredder. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was released in 1989 as a side-scrolling platform game for the NES, released by Konomi. TMNT is a single-player action game. You start off as Leonardo, but can switch to any of the other turtles at any time by pressing the start button to access the information screen. The information screen shows each turtle's health, whatever special weapon he has, a map grid of the current area, and messages from either Splinter or April. Each turtle's unique primary weapon has different speed, power, and reach. If his current character runs out of health, falls into a fatal trap, or is run over by a roller car, he is captured by the enemy, forcing the player to change to one of the remaining turtles. If the player loses all four of the turtles that have been captured, then you lose the game. There is an opportunity to rescue a captured turtle once in each stage, beginning in stage 3. There are a total of six stages in this game. The player navigates the mission map in an overhead view as they travel the doors, manholes, or other entrances to the side-scrolling interior levels. In the overhead view, the player can move in the four cardinal directions and use their primary weapon in a single type of attack. In the side-scrolling levels, the turtles jump or crouch and attack either with their primary weapons while jumping, walking, or crouching, or use one of the alternative weapons that they have picked up along the way. These special weapons include single shurikens, boomerangs, and the Kai, a scroll that expands into a crescent-shaped beam and inflicts significant damage on all enemies, including bosses. I usually stock up on these for the second and last level of this game. These items are occasionally dropped by enemies. The special weapons are obtained in limited quantities, about 20 per pickup, but the boomerang rings can be reused. If the player catches them when they come back, the primary weapon can be aimed upwards or downwards. The player encounters enemy characters, acquires weapons and special items like the rope to cross the unstructured bridges, collects pizza to restore health. This is definitely one of my favorite NES and TMNT games and would recommend trying out this game if you haven't checked it out already. So clearly we are already on to the TMNT 2 video for the NES, so let's talk a little bit about this. The game was ported to the NES in 1990. The conversion was titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, in order to avoid confusion with the previous NES game based on the franchise. The Japanese Famicom version was titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles without a number or subtitle because the first NES game was localized in Japan under a different title. This version includes two new levels, the first part of Scene 3 and all of Scene 6, which feature new enemy characters including two new bosses, Tora, a dog-like blizzard beast, and Shogun, a robotic samurai. Most of the original stages from the arcade version were extended as well as the second half of Scene 3, the parking garage, which replaces the arcade's versions and battle with Bebop and Rocksteady with a battle against the mutated fly form of Baxter Stockman. The NES port appeared in Nintendo's Play Choice 10 arcade system. The player chooses from one of the four Ninja Turtles. The characters are selected at the start of the game. After Shredder kidnaps April O'Neil and Master Splinter, they set out to save their comrades and defeat the evil Shredder. Donatello has slower attacks but a longer range, Michelangelo and Raphael have faster attacks but a shorter range, and Leonardo is a well-rounded turtle with average range and speed. Most of the enemies that the turtles face are the foot soldiers, all color-coded to indicate their attack patterns, and weapons of choice. 
Some enemies, such as the standard purple-clad foot clans and roadkill Rodney robots, have the ability to restrain the turtles' mobility and drain their health, leaving the player open to attack for other enemies. For those of you who are old enough to remember playing this on the arcade, obviously what I was saying is that it's slightly different and the adjustments that they made once they released it on the NES. Definitely an amazing game. Still, to this day, I can go back and keep continuing to play this game and have just as much fun as I did the first time that I played it. It's a pretty lengthy game overall, and it does it is pretty hard to beat, I feel, with the base set of uh, health that you get and the number of lives that you start with, although you are able to get additional lives after you collect 200 points or so many points. Overall, a really great game, and definitely recommend trying it out if you haven't already. Okay, moving on to TMNT 3, The Manhattan Project. In the beginning of the game, the Turtles are on a vacation in Key West, Florida. While watching April O'Neil's latest news report, her broadcast is hijacked by the Turtles' nemesis, Shredder. Taking April as his hostage, Shredder reveals that he has also turned all of Manhattan into a floating island and challenges the Turtles to come to his lair to stop him, which is the basic plot of this game. This game is based on the 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles anime series and was released after the show's fifth season. Toko and Razar from the film Team and T2, The Secret of the Ooze, are featured in this game as well as Shredder's mutated counterpart from the film Super Shredder, who is the final boss in this game. Although Triceraton is featured on the cover, unfortunately he is not listed in this game. This game is a side-scrolling beat-em-up released by Konomi for the NES Family Computer in Japan 1991 and in 1992 for the NES system in North America. Team and T3 The Manhattan Project is a two-player game where you are able to choose between any of the four turtles, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello, and you can change your character each time you lose a life. You get three chances to continue, you have a limited number of lives that get depleted each time a player's energy gauge runs out. If you run out of lives, then you can use the remaining ones from the other player's remaining stock and steal life. There are two different two-player modes featured in this game. The first mode allows both players to hurt each other with their attacks, while the other mode disables this feature. Obviously, one is a little bit more challenging, and one is a little bit more easy. When we played it, with the attack on with we heard from each other it was definitely a little bit more difficult but we learned how to space it out versus kind of like comboing together so it's an interesting mode to play on each character is able to perform the toss attack which does a little bit more damage than your basic attack as well as jumping in the air and additionally each turtle also has a different special attack that is performed by pressing a and b simultaneously every time the player performs this attack a portion of their energy will be lost unless they are on their last bar of life which is very helpful for beating bosses particularly with Raphael and the way that his attack works Definitely also a really good game. I feel like they did a really good extension from Team NT2 to the Team NT3 of the Manhattan Project. I feel like it's definitely very similar. The levels are a little bit similar in some aspects, but also very different. I love the spaceship that they had in the animation for this. Um, I love the fact that they added Super Shredder. These are all just my personal opinions, what I feel with them transferring from the second game to the third game. I feel like they did a really good job. If you watch the other video, I talk about how I really didn't play this game at first. Like I kind of screwed around with like the first level and then eventually me and a buddy of mine went back and played it all the way through and it definitely changed my opinion of this game and I didn't realize all the attacks at first because the first thing that I had seen was the special attack does damage to you and that kind of drove me away from wanting to play the game and then I realized how to do the other attack that is the toss attack that does more damage and is much easier to go through the game because in most cases when you face a foot clan uh, enemy, it only takes one of the toss attacks to kill him, which makes it a lot easier so you're not getting counterattacked if you use just a light attack or something like that. But definitely a really great game for the NES, definitely of course recommend all of these games to anyone who hasn't checked them out yet. And here is the final boss with Super Shredder, and then we'll be moving on to the last game for our series, which is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Alright, moving on to our last game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, or Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles Tournament Fighters in Europe, is the title of three different fighting games based on the TMNT characters produced by Konami for the NES, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo, which were released between 1993 and 1994. Konami produced a different fighting game based on the franchise for each platform, featuring a different cast of characters with the NES version having less characters than the NES SNES version. The the NES version of Tournament Fighters was the final game Konomi released for the platform in North America and the PAL region in 1994. I found this interesting that the game was released on the NES after it was released on the SNES release, and that later released version for the NES included less characters and was obviously more limited because it was on a previous system. This might have been part of the reason I had never heard of this or played this game until recently. Unlike the other versions of Tournament Fighters, it was not released in Japan. 
The game's single-player story mode has the player taking control of one of the four turtles as they hold a contest amongst themselves to see who is the fittest to take on Shredder's challenge. After defeating the first three opponents, the player proceeds to fight Casey Jones and then Hothead, a character based on the Dragon Warrior from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures comics and action figures, before the final match with Shredder. In addition to the story mode, the game also has two versus modes, one against the CPU and another against the second player, as well as a four-player tournament mode. This game offers an option where the player can adjust the game's difficulty, continues in speed. I honestly preferred playing on this game on Turbo, which felt more natural for me, particularly the inputs on Turbo felt more crisp and less laggy in comparison to the regular speed, even with playing on the CRT. Battles consist of three round matches, and the first player to win the two matches obviously wins. Each character has their own life, li their own list of basic punch and kick techniques, as well as command-based special moves. During the battle, a flying monitor with Splendor's face on it will sometimes appear that will drop a red ball power-up at the middle of the stage that can be retrieved by either fighter and thrown at the other opponent. Whatever retrieves the ball can throw it and then also do a decent amount of damage to their opponent. The NES version allows the player to match any character against a clone of himself, except for a hot head. However, there's an exception to this. Under normal circumstances, it wouldn't allow it, but you can bypass this restriction in the game's versus CPU mode. The second hot head will be colored differently, as well as the same character matches in the game. So if you have any two characters facing each other, obviously one will be a little bit of a different color. But if you try to do this with hot head, be careful because it might make your game glitch. Most of this information was found through Wikipedia references or derived from personal experience of the games. Thank you to Wikipedia for providing this information, and if there's anything else you guys find to be incorrect or inconsistent, System, please let us know in the comments down below and we'll definitely have a discussion about that. Thanks so much for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this gameplay and content, give a like, subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications, and of course, thanks for watching and stay tuned for much more gaming content.